back for the conclusion of Super Mario World in its shortest form. Skipping it's so exciting. Basically everything. Uh, on how, how well I get through this castle. Yeah, Rez is scared of this map, so he's handed me the controller. <laughs> and I'm playing... Erroneous. I'm playing well. Erroneous on all counts. <laughs> Is more challenging though, as I'm trying to remember. Uh, yes. And uh, I may have the. There's, there's different ways to go through this, so. I'll tell you what, this part though is getting a little easier. Guys play with this one. Yeah. If, if, I, if I, I remember correctly, correctly there's. You've you got, got the, the one through four, four you saw those numbers. numbers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, and then you get five through eight, and they're all different. different. Every one of them leads to here, and then every one of these will lead to Bowser, I think. Okay. <laughs> what you uh, doing oh no. in here, Chuck? <laughs> A wild <laughs> Raphael. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. Not another ornery Otis. <laughs> oh, it's a whole pack of them. Oh, no. I... <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Uh, Oh, 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 no, oh, 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 get out of there. <laughs> I was going to say a, a gaggle of grumpy get Gregs or something. Like that. <laughs> gaggle of grumpy Gregs. <laughs> That's the best. Go, things started to go pear-shaped real fast, so I uh, I had to give up on that. Who do you think wines those? Big Pharma. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Right, well, you know what? This episode may end up being shorter than I thought because here he is. Is that supposed to be a spotlight or a disco ball? A right. question for the agent. <laughs> All right, let's see how well this goes. I like the you know attempt at comic relief to this very dark scene with that clown smile. It's not really comic relief because wait till you see like the faces it makes. Oh no. Oh, hit. Bowser winds him. He's got to hit it. Oops. Oh, sad face. The tears of a clown. Well, um, definitely can't get hit again. I think hopefully Peach will appear in a second. Dude, I remember the first time it happened. I was like, I think I may have physically dodged out of the way. <laughs> yeah, you think for sure this must be coming to kill you. Now, if Peach should throw out a mushroom, like you. She's always packing shrooms. <laughs> always ready for a good time. <laughs> I don't know how many. I think there's three of these. <laughs> I thought. Where did that I, I don't, come yeah, I don't from? Know where he's got room for any of them. <laughs> That's why it looks like a clown. How can you afford these things? They're way <laughs> he's like this special order, like inverted helicopter clown car. Where he can just fit endless stuff into it. Has it has a black hole in the bottom, apparently. Yeah. He just summons whatever he needs out of it. Well, that's what clown cars do, right? You ever been to the circus, seen the clown car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the circus is basically kaput now. Really? Why? Well, I mean... Because I think of COVID or because no one likes clowns? No, I mean, like... Because there's... there's uh, Bar Barnum shut down. Barnum and Bailey shut down because... I, I saw it the first time I took my youngest... Uh, sorry, my oldest daughter to the circus is there are all these uh you know animal rights activists protesting oh i see and they just they had to get rid of uh all elephants and all all animals basically and they just ended up not being able to draw the crowds they used to so it's like okay the animals are i think that's game free hey nice job okay so that went faster than i expected I didn't expect to one-shot it, but I one-shotted it. Oh, yeah, you did. Nice. Is this the first high-res peach we've seen? Oh, finally some sugar. She's always in another That's castle. That's always going to get, though. It's, it's, it's always on a cheek. Not really much sugar. It's always, it's I, always a, a cheek plant. I think she uh, I think she had a little stash on the lips there. <laughs> I think so. I think she... Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. how fast do you think a five-year-old can read? <laughs> Oh, that's this is cause for celebration. I mean, Mario was so confident that he had those queued up, ready to go. He's like, "All right, after I beat the boss, 
and kiss, and she goes in for the stash. He pointed at all the other Yoshis you saved from the castles, technically, and you're like, hit it! Yeah. Or it's actually the Yoshi eggs that he's lighting on fire that blow up <laughs> and turn into a... Oh, it's credits. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> All right. So I'm not sure what to do with this episode. We might have to just uh, talk it out here for a little bit at the end. Or... Well, I got to see the credits where they introduce all the baddies. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We will, we're going to get to all that for sure. Yeah. I mean, that, um, that's coming, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're in the credits. Mm-hmm. All right. So while the credits are running, I'm going to make a record here. Can I can I talk about this? Sure. Yeah. All right. I, uh, my, my good friend, Rez, saved me the last beer he had made by Westbrook Brewing Company. And they're, they're not a sponsor or anything, but I'm just telling you, this is so we'll good. We'll accept sponsorship. <laughs> If you guys like a goes, that's how you say it, right? Goes, goes, or goes, goes, yeah. goes a. Uh, this is a key lime pie goes a from Westbrook Brewing uh, Company, and it is delicious. It's so goes a, not goes a. It's not French. It's German. It'd be a German. Goes. I'll say. Goes a. Goes a. Goes a. Yeah. All right. Citrusy, sour, delicious. Uh, it tastes like sour, like key lime pie in a can. It. it I and love key lime pie. And it'll get you drunk. I love beer. It'll get you drunk. Do you like drinking? Hell, you like drinking. <laughs> Who the hell don't? <laughs> <laughs> if you're like me, you like to get bent just as fast as possible. What's so funny about that sketch now is like it wouldn't even make sense. Because do they really know who Aunt Jemima is? Wait, it's still called Aunt Jemima. Her face is just gone, right? Well, it's Uncle Jemima's mashed liquor. Right, but on the syrup. Yeah, yeah. you might remember my wife. Yeah. Aunt Jemima with a pancake. You're welcome. I didn't save any of you. I saved one Yoshi. <laughs> the rest of you are languishing in your castles with... Here we go. The Parabomb, the Paragoomba, the Fish and Lakitu, the Lakitu, the Spiny, the Bomb, the Wiggler. You're not really going to read all of them, are you? I intend to. I want to commit the memory. <laughs> Rez is reaching for a beer. <laughs> Amazing Flying Hammer Brother, Super Goomba, Jumping Piranha Plant, Charging Chuck, Volcano Lotus. A beer while this is happening, then. Call now and receive a Sumo Brother, a Pokey, a Monty Mole, a Bullet Bill. And that's not all. If you call within the next 90 minutes, you will receive or whenever, a, free, you're lying. <laughs> yeah, a free Rex, a Mega Mole, and a Bonsai Bill. We have a special officers for a special offer for our Gabertarians listeners. You get a Dino Rhino, a Dino Torch, and the Koopas. <laughs> He's struggling with the ball opener. You get a Spike Top, a Swoopers, a Buzzy Beetle, a Blarg. Blarg. You get Blurps. You get Porky Puffer. You get an Urchin. You get Rip Van Fish. <laughs> Torpedo Ted. <laughs> Yeah, Sleepy Joe. Oh, my gosh. Boo Buddies, Fish and Boo, the Big Boo, and Eeries. Dry Bones, Dry Bones, Bony Beetle, Lil Spanky, Thwomp, Hothead, and Thwomp. We're going to talk about this before the episode ends. I hate those time wheel things. You, you read your thing. It's fine. Ball and Chain, Grinder, Fishbone. I didn't know my wife was in this. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'll be here all week, folks. Trent Reznor. I think that's actually what they were named after. Oh, are you serious? They might, they might have actually been, yeah. I just guessed that? Yeah, I might well, be wrong. I mean, I might how, be com- wrong. how common is Reznor? Yeah. Mecha Koopas. I mean, does a wind up toy really get to be called a Mecha? Oh, Roy Koopa, Wendy Koopa, Larry Koopa, Ludwig von Koopa, <laughs> Iggy Koopa, and a cast of thousands. Let me, I don't know. Yeah, see, that, I think they might, it, might, it might actually be because some of those, all the American names for those come from, I mean, the, the American people named them. So, like, Lemmy is Lemmy Kilmeister. Oh. Iggy is Iggy Pop. Oh. Uh, Ludwig is Ludwig von Beethoven. But oh. uh, all of them have names that, that come from something like that. Um, Mario, Peach, and Luigi remember uh, ask you to remember to have your pet spayed or neutered, <laughs> and remember to buy bonds. <laughs> it's the patriotic thing to do. Uh, so we've got a little bit more time here to cruise on. So I'm gonna, while we sit on this end screen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rant. 
And I know that you're probably going to disagree with me, Brex. Oh, dear. But I, one of those tactics is that act now. There's only 10 minutes left or 90 <laughs> minutes. Or we only have 50 of those things. Drives me crazy, particularly about when, it, when it's some sort of online info thing. Mm -hmm. Because it is 100% an artificial time limit to, make, to increase pressure on you. That is it. It's not real. They are only doing it to make sh to to prod you further into purchasing the product, not because it's a better product or anything like that, but to make you feel some sort of undue pressure to buy the product, and that is why I hate it. So Res makes me a better person because he challenges me to always be positive and upbeat and kind, especially in our interactions with our fans, and that's that's great. And even even people who aren't our fans, because we want this to be a positive energy, good vibe place to hang out but this is one thing that you've got to let go you have got to let this go you need to adopt it you need to do it because there's only one reason people do it it freaking works it freaking works it creates that sense of urgency for people to take action and people are going to do stuff we, we believe in voluntary association and people doing stuff if they want to do it and so if they want to do it, they'll do it. And if they need a little bump because there's a sense of urgency created with time scarcity, that's not a bad thing. But it's it's not okay. actual time scarcity. It's, it's a, fake time scarcity. That's okay. That's okay. It's And it's okay not to like it. But you can you can continue to not like it or you can harness it and start to use it. And Because sales, what is, what is sales about? Selling. What gets people to buy when they make a decision? What gets them to make the decision if they think it's going to be value add to their life and they feel like maybe they may not have this chance to do it again. Fear of missing out. Right. So I, it's OK not to like value it. value add to their life and you got a good product. You don't need to artificially make them feel like pressuring them into it because they're going to miss out on it. It could just be a good product that you're selling to them. Yeah, true. But maybe you're like me and you're like lazy sometimes and you need a little extra push. I mean, you're. You are in a bit of an outlier in that you're unfazed by that approach in sales. A lot of people are impacted by it, and that results in more revenue, more That's sales. Because they think it's real. I know it's BS. So, so That's is your problem? I, me anymore. I know I can come back and watch this video that I, this ten minute video that I can't skip, even though I just want to know what the price is, figure out if I want to buy this program or not. I already know that when you, if I come back to this, it's still going to be, oh, there's seven spots left. Who knew there would still be seven spots left in a week later? No, uh, I mean, okay, so are, are you saying you're fundamentally opposed to that sales tactic because you think it actually dabbles in dishonesty? Yes. Okay. It's a lie. It's Okay. They're, they're, they're not, there is no scarcity that they're, it's actually, they're just artificially creating one to make you feel pressured into making the decision. That's why. It feels fraudulent to me. Sometimes it's used... So sometimes there really is a limit. Okay? Sometimes there really is. But it's not because like time is going to run out. It's just that their organization for servicing customers is at capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they close the doors then. Yeah, I've done, I've, I've done programs where there's obviously live coaching or something involved. Yeah. So they can't live coach... 100,000 people. So there's got to be a limit to that, and that makes sense to me. Yeah. But when it's e – even one that I'm, I'm, I'm following right now, I just knew – and I, <clears throat> I trust the person that I'm learning from, so I, I l am looking past the nonsense tactics that he's using because I just know they are. Like that you set up a – oh, if you want to see the video, you, you got to sign up for a time to see the live video. And you, you go through all these different times and, oh, wow, that's weird. All those times are the same. Where, hey, this first one's always five minutes from now. That's strange. Oh, if I click it. Oh, no, this is obviously a pre-recorded video. There's nothing live about this. this yeah. Is, this, this, just dishonest. Yeah. It gets time and attention. I think you can be successful without having to attempt to, in effect, dupe the person you're trying to sell to. That is my, that is my problem with it. That's and fine. I think... I don't. I think we're we're cut from slightly different cloths because your dad was in the what the Chicago Stock Exchange. Or yeah, what? Mercantile yeah. Exchange. Mercantile yeah. Exchange. You know, selling and ownership and things have been, have been marketing have been a huge part of your life. Uh, where 
I think for me and a lot of people in my generation and particularly gamers, I never trusted salesmen. It took me a very long time in my life to be able to trust a salesman. I had to read a book by Harry Brown called The Secret to Selling Everything. Oh, awesome. Um, or something like that that just is more about if you're selling to say like, I'm trying to figure out what you want and give you what you want. Yeah, value. Yep. And give you that value. Uh, when I, I when I grew up, and I think the way most people grow up when you just get a regular standard education is, um, salesmen are all it's all used car salesmen. Mm. It's all people who are just trying to screw you to make to make a buck off of you. Yeah. That is what that's how I grew up viewing selling and how most people I think view it, particularly in my generation. Uh, so it's important not. To me, to not come off as fake or pretending I really like something to, to push it or using fake tactics like that to pressure people because I think that will turn away people. I think right now it still works because the boomers have all the money and it works on boomers. But I think in the next 10 to 20 years or so, I don't think it's going to work anymore. And oh. People are going to have to change their marketing tactics. Interesting. Because it's not going to work on millennials. If 10 to 20 years from now, it's still working... I will shamelessly use it. All right. <laughs> and 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 the in a reason month from now you might shamelessly <laughs> yeah, use right. it with the right products. <laughs> right. And 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 the reason is because like ultimately if I believe in my product, which I will only sell something I believe in, I do think it's dishonest to sell something that you know is bad. Mm-hmm. But if I if I, you know, really believe in my product, then I don't I I really won't care how people get to that value. If they get it and they benefit from it, then it's been a win-win. And if I if I push people like you away, who feel pressured and put and uh, put off by that tactic, my my guess is people only do that because the net sales they get using that tactic, even if they lose people who are pushed off by it. Right now, like you said, demographics can change. Uh, selling methods can change according to consumer preferences over time. Um, I don't prefer that method, but my guess is the only reason so many of these guys use it is, and like you said, like the non-skippable video and, and all that stuff, it's because I think, I mean, in sales, they also teach you like, if you can't get people's attention, uh, you can't make your value proposition. You can't make people say, I want that. I want that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, which is, I mean, I can't tell you professionally how many sales demos I go to that could have easily have been like to save him time or whoever's pitching me on it. They could have played me some canned presentation. What I'm getting is not better. No, that's not true. I can ask questions at the end, I guess, is what makes it better uh, for a lot of demos that I go to. Uh, but for the most part, I'm just I'm doing it because they're they're They got a calendar invite and I know that they'll be there live. And it's like out of kind of human to human respect that we're that I'm going to be there. I'm going to show up even though I got other stuff to do. I'm going to open the spear if I can. Let's rip this red out. Oh, yeah. Right up, Bavarian Amber Lager. Sorry, was that uh, adequate discussion for you? No, yeah, I think that I think that was that was good. And we'll, you know what? Hopefully, someone will. We we'll get some comments, see where people stand, and then we'll then we'll know uh, uh, what how people think about it. Yeah. So, so, however you guys feel about this thing, see, tell me which side you pick the the red side, which is the right one, or the black side, which <laughs> is obviously the wrong one. But whichever one, if you want to be on the right or the wrong side, that's fine. Then yeah. Let me know. It, you know. Let us know. Uh, in the next four hours, if you comment. We'll get back to you <laughs> the next on that. Fifty people to comment. Yeah, the next fifty people to comment. <laughs> we'll get a response, but after that, we're closing the comment section. So, I'm just gonna comment on people who comment <laughs> forever <laughs> because I want engagement and I like you. <laughs> In the meantime, don't forget to love the game and hate the state. Peace out, guys. <laughs>